I start by removing the body from the body bag. I lift the head and get it out of the bag. I take the legs out on one side and the bag on the other. I'm using a medical phantom and the bed is too small, so some things might go different than usual, but we'll get the job done anyway. I grab the body by the wrist with one hand and the hip with the other and I turn it on its side. I bunch a part of the back, stuff it under the side of the body closer to me and lay the body back down gently. I pull out the rest of the body bag, bit by bit, until it's completely free. I fold the bag nicely and put it away for disposal. After the body is taken out of the bag, I inspect it, checking if it needs a sponge bath or has any wounds. Old people often have horrible wounds and blisters on their arms and legs, and the best way to treat them is to wrap them tightly with stretch foil. It doesn't show through the clothes and does a good job in keeping the fluids away from them. If it's a man, then now would be shaving time. In case of a teethless man, I push my finger under his cheek, which helps shaving in the tight spots. Now it's time to stuff the mouth and the nostrils to prevent any fluids from coming out of the body. I use a medical tissue, which is just a kind of a paper towel to be honest. I make two corks and screw them into the nose. I wipe the eyeballs dry with it also, which makes them easy to close and they won't open unless someone helps them too. I use an adult diaper to prevent the body from soiling itself unexpectedly. I do it always if the body came soiled already. To put the diaper on, I need to balance the body on its side again. I put the diaper on the back, pull it to the front and lay the body on the back. I try to make the diaper neat so it won't be visible. Sometimes I just use a piece of tissue to act as a diaper. I put it tightly around the parts that could provide leakage. Finally, time to put the underwear on. I put the undies on both feet and then gradually move forward, one leg at a time. One final adjustment on the back and the underwear is on its place. The family of the deceased decided that he'll be wearing colorful socks. I bunch one of them in my hands, remembering to point the heel of the sock at myself. Putting the socks on can be a real struggle, especially when people have swollen or slightly moist feet or the provided socks are just too small. When my gloves are sliding down, I adjust them immediately, so they won't get caught in the clothes and my movements can be more precise. This is especially important before buttoning things up or tying a tie. In extreme cases, I roll the socks like a condom. If I just can get around the heel, then there's just smooth sailing from there. I never leave the socks uneven like that. I always adjust them as if I would be wearing them myself. These are my socks after all. Next, I put the shirt on the body with the collar facing down, the back facing up and unbutton it completely. I take a plastic sandwich bag and put it on one hand like a glove. This trick reduces friction and makes the sleeve slide on with ease. I put the sleeves on both hands and pull them as far as I can. 
it is very important to remember to adjust the sleeves so this seam is on the shoulder. Otherwise, it would be very hard to put the shirt on. After that, I roll the bottom of the shirt outside tightly, which will help me a lot in a minute. I take both hands together and put them above the head. Then it's just a matter of picking the head up and pulling the rolled up shirt over it. If the body is not stuffed, then there's a risk of the fluids leaking through the mouth and nose because putting the hands above the head makes it work a bit like a water pump and it can purge itself onto the clothes to the horror of the one who dresses it. This is what we are really scared of. Not the dead or ghosts, but clothes ruined right before the funeral. Thanks to the shirt being rolled up, I can now pull the bag down very easily. If I don't roll it, then the bottom of the shirt falls inside and upwards and you struggle to pull it out. It's all about those tiny simple tricks. I make the collar stand up and button up the first button. Some families insist on keeping the first button unbuttoned because he always hated it when he was alive. Sometimes it's impossible to do it because of the size of the neck and sometimes it's better not to do it so the person doesn't look like it's being strangled with its own collar. I button the rest of the shirt up, or down rather. The tie often comes already tied and ready to just slide on the head but it really helps to know how to tie one so I decided to show off a little but the stage fright got the better of me and I forgot how to do it. I take the jacket and put it on exactly the same way as I did with the shirt using the plastic bag and the rolling technique. I've never seen the rolling technique before and I developed it myself. The jacket always bunches up at the neck and the best way to fix this is to grab the back of it behind the hip and pull it firmly. Normally I put the pants on before the jacket but I got too distracted with filming this and put the jacket on first. I put the pants on both feet and slide them as high as possible. I turn the body to the side again and pull the pants up. It's important to bunch the material up as far as it can go because otherwise your own hand will prevent you from pulling with the other. I grab the trouser leg like this and even everything out. The shoes are often a big problem, mostly by being too small. I loosen them up as much as I can. I slide the shoes on, doing a rocking motion and slap the heel for good luck. I learned how to tie my shoes when I was 4 and 36 years later I still use the bunny ears method. If the shoes are too small, I cut them here on both sides and sometimes in the middle of the heel as well. I won't be turning the body on the side anymore so I can take the stuffing out. The final stage is the hair and makeup. I really like doing it and the fancier wishes the family has the better and more exciting for me. When the body is a man, I apply just a bit of powder and comb his hair. I put the towel around the neck to protect the clothes. It's important to apply moisturizing cream on the shaved areas, so the skin won't dry out, which shows as a small orange spots and ruins the whole look. Just a few final touches and the body can be presented to the family.
So this is it. And if you have any questions, feel free to write them down below and I will gladly answer them as usual. So thank you for watching and and what? And see you next time. Bye.